as the conversation on the 2023 presidency continues to gather momentum across regional and political belts, Nigerian governors, their predecessors and other top party stakeholders are tightening their belts to take control of the party. Uh, of both the APC and the PDP. Joining us live to discuss this, we have public affairs analyst, Mr. Bola Olpa. He is uh, joining us live from Zoom here in Lagos. And of course, joining us in the studio, political commentator, Mr. Adeni Kunu. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to start with you, um, Adeni this is not necessarily new when it's leading up to elections. You know, there are measures crisscrossing, uh, sometimes crises in parties, you know, leading up to elections. But what makes this particular one so different that, um, you know, it seems to be stepping on the wrong toes? Because governors, sitting governors, we also have governors who have been governors, who are now senators, and of course, the outliers coming together to form a mega party. Why does this look different? It sounds like an, an APC all over again, doesn't it? Let's not forget that in 2014, uh, a merger resulted in what we have as the APC today. Uh, but the difference really is that the governors, even if their opinions or their positions were different, to a great extent still work with the party. But it seems as if these days and times, the governors are more brazen, they are more confident, and their intentions are made known, not necessarily resulting to any of those who you could term their predecessors in the parties or those they look up to. And do not also forget that the National Working Committee uh, leadership of the APC, let me even say the party chairperson, uh, the chairman and president of Adam Sashomale, was you know, sent packing because of the power block in the APC mm. and this same set of governors that appear to be coming together uh, unarguably responsible for it when it became as if the party couldn't actually breathe easy mm. so the president had to let him go and if you also look at it it perhaps might not be as tough as it is for the ruling party if you look at it that the president without the powers actually cancelled the national working committee ended the lifespan of that. Uh, the little I've read, when I say little, the papers I've looked at, the APC constitution, I, I've not seen where the leader of the party just annulled a particular elective working committee. And if you look at it, if you, are, if you hold any position, if you're a governor or anything, you cannot also hold a party position. At the same time, you, you brought back, you know, the governor of Yobe State, who should not actually hold a position of the party to head the transition committee. So there's a whole lot of confusion there. And don't forget, he's a sitting governor. You've talked about the war chest. So basically, I think the governors believe that they have a lot of things in the, at their disposal that can make them, you know, turn the tables around. Mm. And people never believe they could go this way. And don't forget, it's, also, it's not just happening in the ruling party. It's also happening at the opposition party. Mm. So basically, they believe that our eyes are open now to say that we have a lot of power and influence in our hands and we can do this. Then don't also forget that they believe that the perhaps unwritten agreement they had before the merger in 2014 cannot be the same thing that they have to follow, that perhaps the times have changed and things have changed and other persons are interested. So the days ahead are interesting. Interesting. Mr. Bola, I'm coming to you now. This seems to be a war of you know relevance per se because this is more like the sitting governors versus former governors. Uh, and the aggrieved party seems to be the former governors who seem like they're no longer relevant. Uh, and the incumbent governors are tightening their grip, really, really holding fast to whatever powers are at their disposal. Uh, and, and the ex-governors are feeling left out. So my question is, um, do we need a new political party per se at this time, at this point in Nigeria's um, life, political life. Is that what we're looking for? Is that what will change? Is that what will bring the change that we've been pushing for? A new mega party, will that change anything for us? Or is it about strong politicians who necessarily have, let's say, you know, um, the interest of the people at heart? If you change the parties, would you change the politicians? If you change the parties, would you change the partisans? 
are we going to still have to play with this set of partisans? Because, you know, if you really look at the question with due respect, oh, change the nomenclatures of the parties. It used to be uh, PDP and some other parties. APC emerged as a major party, and APC, with all the changey, changey, changey uh, mantra, APC is now uh, evolving, or now practically, practically just uh, copying from the uh, book of infamy of PDP. What is happening in APC now as a ruling party that is dramatically different from what used to happen in the PDP? We, pra we practice a plutocracy, and in a plutocracy, those who have the money, those who control uh, the money, define the political space. The governors happen to have access to their uh, state treasuries. So what is happening now? Have we not read it because, before? Is this not deja vu? But that, that, that's, I, the reason, I that's the reason I asked my question, because really, do we need another new mega party? Is that really what we want in this country? Bearing in mind that we hardly have what we call party ideologies in Nigeria, and that's why we're easy, it's easy to see people crisscross from the APC to the PDP. So having another big political party with the same faces, what difference does it make? You just answered your question. That's a conundrum. A conundrum is a question that has its own answer. Oh, I think he's frozen there. So but, I embedded in it. That's unfortunate. But uh, Adini. Hello? Okay, you're back. Well, Hello? You, you, froze, you froze up for a bit. I said, if you change the parties, are we going to dispose of the partisans? Because these partisans are set in their ways. And their ways don't seem to be the ways of progress for this country. So I don't know. The, the issue of mega party, of, that was the same agenda we had when it was being formed. Any dramatic change at this juncture? Absolutely none. Uh, back to you, Adeni, uh, just following up from where he stopped. So we do not need new political parties because we have the same people. There are no new ideologies per se. There is a movement. Uh, my last conversation has been talking about a movement, a revolution of sorts. But where are these people, these said revolutionaries? Where are the people, the strong men and women that have the change? And I'm not talking about the ABC kind of change, the change mm -hmm. that we all require. Why are they not the ones who are floating a new party. And indeed, we have so many political parties in Nigeria. Where are all those parties? They, we know them in name when it's time for the election. So what exactly do we need at this point in Nigeria's life? No, I just think that uh, what is ultimate uh, in all of this conversation is to consider where they plot the graph of the people. Because the conversation that we find is about some powerful governors, some retired governors, some politicians. The conversation doesn't have the Nigerian people. All they've been saying is the party did this, uh, we have new idea. None of them has come out really repeatedly talk about what should benefit the people because they are talking about floating another party that will make PDP and APC less powerful. Nobody is talking about the fact that they didn't give the deal of the people to them and that's the reason why they believe the people should be the one in control rather than the party calling the shots. Mm. So I think that people will fall into the the, you know, the hole that they create with all of this should actually stand very carefully to look at where things are headed because um, as the year comes, uh, we'll see much drama unfold. And don't also forget that when we talk about politics, usually we don't have permanent enemies or friends. Interest is the only constant in any kind of mathematics you put together in politics. Mm. It therefore means that we have to look at Okay, what's the interest that actually make the people that occupy the office of the citizens the most important in the equation we are talking about? Because if we do not consider the people, 
then we've left everything to go with the winds. It therefore means if we are talking, for instance, a number of governors and some cabinet members of this administration, El Rufai, uh, Rotimi and Mechi, they've talked about it is only important that the power goes to the south, although El Rufai was saying, although he doesn't think that's how democracy should work, but he believes that what has been agreed, gentleman's agreement. So that simply means there was an agreement before the merger in 2014, or after the merger, that if the power goes north, it has to come south. Even if many people are not comfortable with it, that's what some of them agreed. But if you also look at it, some other persons are not very comfortable with that arrangement. They believe that at this point we cannot, do, well, we'll even among armed robbers, they have ethics. Among thieves, there is honor. You understand? So let us look at, uh, the reality is, let's look at those who are honorable and those who understand the ethics of what they've agreed to. But in the, in the, in the whole equation, you have to repeat, where does the average Nigerian stand in this particular agreement? That is what is ultimate for me. Because if you don't put Nigerians in the picture, we're still going to remain where we are. We know what's happening to us at the moment. I would really want to follow up with a question and say, I mean, have we ever been the priority? Because most times these decisions are made within party members. And the average Nigerian who is governed does not necessarily think that politics or political parties is a place for them. So when will we ever be included in the whole? Well, if you look at it, for everybody who finds himself or herself within the political sphere, you'd always have to talk to people and give them the impression that you could do justice to all the things that have affected them. For the people who actually understand how politics go, from Jerusalem to Jericho and to any other part of the world, you'd agree with me that they will always come to talk to you about what they believe they can offer. And they usually go ahead to say, these are the things that we have for you. Now, I listened to some of your guests at the, you know, at the first segment of this program, where a man, I think the essay to the governor of media in Kano or something, mm -hmm. was talking about the fact that in terms of restructuring, people do not know what, 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 what restructuring means, is being smart by half. Because a state that is close to Kano actually has the governor, El Rufai, who led a committee on put together on mm -hmm. restructuring. Mm -hmm. And it is over two years that they have come out with a report that has gathered dust that should have actually solved the problem of restructuring. Mm. So I, I think it's been, I, I'm, I'm close to using a word that shouldn't be, but as the essay to the governor on media, I didn't expect him to take everybody for idiots by saying that, because you put a question to him and he said people do not understand. And that's a big lie because he is even a member of the party that set up a committee to ensure that they understand the definition of restructuring. So coming on global television as yours to tell a lie is something disgraceful that he said. So the reality is, okay. let the party, it does it, it's gathering dust. 2021 is gonna be three years sooner than later. So these are the issues and the insincerity that we'll continue to see. So let them tell us their own, def since they don't understand what restructuring means from simple definition, they went ahead, they formed the committee headed by El Rufai. He has come out with the report. They are keeping quiet again. I'll come back to that. Mr. Bwalaoba, there are so many alliances going on as we speak. Enemies who used to be enemies before 2019 uh, are now becoming friends. I mean, um, people are even going quietly to make peace, um, you know, Reconciliatory moves. We saw recently that uh, uh, the former governor of Lagos and the party leader for the APC, um, Mr. Bolamet Tidubu, has said that he's reconciling with all of the people that he has had issues with and, of course, making moves. But where would the, do you think that the parties, the political parties, both APC, PDP, and even the mega party, if it actually you know, becomes a thing, where do you think they all will be zoning the presidency's ticket to? Because that's, where, that's what everybody's talking about. The Ndibos are at loggerheads right now because of who emerged as uh, the new leader of the Ndibos. And that's the matter that's in court. And these people are also agitating for a, a, a president coming to the southeast. So um, is it just going to be about whoever the party feels? Or should, it, should the parties now start considering who really 
should be leading Nigeria at this point, being that we've tried everything else. About We've tried, you know, somebody who we think can do the job, somebody who looks like he can do the job. Mm -hmm. How about somebody who can really do the job? Well, do you think parties will be considering that this time around? If I understood the question correctly, it is typical that about this time for politicians to be making the alignments. Uh, it is just typical in Nigeria uh, that the government seem to have a functional advantage or that the government seem to be better placed than other sets of politicians because of, their, because of the ease of access they have to their trustees. It's not also new. You must remember that a Schwartz Brooklyn president was act to postpone for his vice president because the governors were lining up behind the vice president. Hmm. And we have seen that even in the emergence of the APC, he took some governors having to walk out of the PPP convention for the mega party that today is called the APC for it to emerge. Mm -hmm. So I am one who is surprised that anything that may be happening between the parties, be it the APC or the PDP, and I'm one who is not particularly shocked too that the governors may seem to have a poll, poll advantage of the sun. If my audio is good to you, I, I think I, I, I've made my point. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Well, on that note, we want to appreciate you all for being here. Walaba is a political analyst, and so is Adeni Ikunu. Thank you very much for being Thank part of the conversation. Thank you for having us here. Thank you. Well, more of these kinds of conversations will come your way on Plus Politics. Stay, stay with us. We'll be right back. And when we come back, Nigerians have their say about whether Nigeria needs new political parties or better candidates. We need a better candidate. I don't think we need a, a new uh, political party. If we need to reshovel, I think they need to get new, uh, young people to rule Nigeria. And then what we just need that we need a youth. Let youth come out and see what youth can do. But all these people, I don't think they have anything for youth at all. Only my advice for them, though, we need a youth. At least we have for governor or president. Well, for me, I believe better candidates is what we need. It's not all about party. Because I think the parties we have now, the popular parties we have now, have nothing to deliver. So we need personality, not party. Somebody who actually can, you know, do it, take us to the promised land. Not really party this time around. Yeah. Honestly. Uh, new political parties should be fine, though. It should be fine. You know, I think it should change another, you know, change different, uh, as in a different set of political parties. Let there be change. You understand? It's time for my take. Governance and leadership is about the people, which means those to be governed have to be top on the list of politicians' priorities. But in our dear country, Nigeria, the case seems to be different because politicians are most interested in their self-interest than serving its people. So I say to every Nigerian, as these politicians are strategizing and aligning and realigning, playing their game of chess for 2023, we also need to not sit on the fence. Let's get involved. Let's assume the office of the citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Show them that they are here to serve us and not the other way around. The time to act is now. Ask the right questions. Keep every politician on his toes. Say no to lip service and say yes to accountability. And that's my take. I am Mariana Kong, thanking you for watching. Don't forget to follow us on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, and of course you can follow us on Facebook and watch our shows on YouTube. Have a good evening.